Hello all. I wanted to first start by welcoming everyone as folks join us today. So today we're gonna to go over the semester program options for students in the College of Health and Human Sciences. Um, and as folks join us, I wanted to say thank you for watching this today. Education abroad can have such a profound impact on a student's life. So the fact that you're taking the time to watch this session means so much and could be a step towards a positive and life-changing experience. So hello everyone, welcome. My colleague Nicole is here today to moderate the, the question and answer box. So please feel free to chat in questions or even tell us a little bit about yourself in that question box or if there's someone we're, we're interested in traveling to, if you've been somewhere cool, it makes the session more engaging. So let's get started with the College of Health and Human Sciences semester program session. Before introductions, I'll start with the CSU land acknowledgement. Colorado State University acknowledges with respect that the land we are on today is the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Ute nations and peoples. This was also a site of trade, gathering, and healing for numerous other native tribes. We recognize that the indigenous peoples as the indigenous peoples as original stewards of this land and all the relatives within it. As these words of acknowledgement are spoken and heard, the ties nations have to their traditional homelands are renewed and reaffirmed. CSU is founded as a land grant institution, and we accept that our mission must encompass access to education and inclusion, and significantly, that our founding came at a dire cost to Native nations and peoples whose land this university was built upon. This acknowledgement is the education and inclusion we must practice in recognizing our institutional history, responsibility, and commitment. So I'll introduce myself. Hello, everyone. My name is Marie Schaller. I use she, her programs. I advise for the region of Europe with some notable exceptions. So um, the UK and Ireland, is uh, my colleague Christopher Snodgrass advises for the UK and Ireland. Drew Doty and Nicole Pulowski advise for Spain and Portugal. And George Agres advises for Italy and Greece. I advise for everything else. I also um, coordinate some faculty-led programs and I supervise our peer advisors who are student employees in our office who have been abroad before and are here to help students going abroad through the process. And we'll see their pictures in a later slide. So you might've already attended the Education Abroad 101 presentation. And if you haven't, there's a, there are all available on our YouTube after being live streamed. And this presentation goes over the skills you gain from Education Abroad, why it's important, uh, a breakdown of different program types. So now we're going to jump into the programs that are recommended for your college. Uh, but before we jump in, I wanted to dispel, dispel some myths about education abroad. So first things first, education abroad should not delay your graduation. In fact, with good planning, it will enhance your degree, help you graduate on, on time, and in some instances, maybe even graduate early. Second, there are myths that education abroad is more expensive than courses at CSU and living here in Fort Collins. There are expensive programs, but many are a similar price to a, sem a semester at CSU and in Fort Collins, and some are even less expensive. Third, if you start early and talk to your academic advisor about growing, going abroad, you can fulfill course requirements to go abroad. This could be courses required for your major or electives. And we recommend getting started early and talking to your academic, academic advisor about that. But it's a myth that you can't go abroad um, in any major. 
Last, our risk management team has certainly had a busy time since the pandemic. We have an international risk manager that constantly monitors and communicates some of the challenges or risks students may face while they are abroad. But by working together, we can foster a safe and successful experience. So I wanted to start off with a little snapshot of students in your college. So we have a breakdown um, by the different majors. Great job, HDFS students. Um, and then also the top destinations to go abroad. We'll talk about Italy today. Um, and Costa Rica was mentioned in our short-term programs. Nearly every CSU department now has an approved recommended programs abroad list. We created these lists in partnership with the academic departments. This is just a start, but you can be confident that if the program is on this list, there are multiple courses that could fulfill your degree requirements. And as always, be sure to communicate with your academic advisor about your academic needs. So I'm gonna mention a couple programs that are good for a longer term, so semester or academic year abroad. And there are many programs that could work for students in your college, and I just picked a few. So this is a representation of different programs offered. So if you see one that you really connect with, amazing. Um, but if not, please come on in and meet with us. We'd love to talk to you more about your majors and goals specifically. I had to few, choose a few, so this is what I went with. Just to give you a little taste. So this is a program with API, an organization that CSU partners with to send students abroad. You can learn more about the affiliate organizations. API is an affiliate program. Um, you can learn more about this in the Education Abroad 101 presentation. So students have access to courses from the full curriculum at Harriet Watt University in Edinburgh. Um, and Edinburgh is in Scotland. Students can take courses with Scottish and other international students. So this work program works well for construction management students, but it has a full curriculum, so it works well for a lot of majors too. Uh, it also works well for brewing and distilling, fashion design, and textile students. Edinburgh is between the size of Fort Collins and Denver, though it's much more compact. It's the capital um, city of Scotland, and it has a medieval old town and an elegant Georgian new town with gardens and neoclassical buildings. So you'll see Edinburgh Castle on a hill, and the city is gorgeous, full of history and a buzzing energy. Uh, and all of your classes will be in English because it's in Scotland. Now I'm going to talk about the University of Limerick in Ireland. This is an exchange program. So you might, so a CSU student and an uh, Irish student exchange places. So you might need a few Irish students here who are studying abroad at CSU. This is our only exchange program in Ireland. Limerick is a small town, about 60,000 people. And because of this, it's a really traditional Irish community and culture. So compared to Dublin, which is much bigger, international, cosmopolitan, Limerick really provides the authentic Irish experience, but it has everything you need in a city. It's a true representation um, of the Irish experience and there's nothing lost, but everything gained. It's closer to the west coast of Ireland, which is uh, the coast closest to the ocean. So it's near all of the dramatic Irish landscapes, which makes Ireland really popular. So this is a great smaller sized city with an academic atmosphere. And construction management students, look at those Gothic arches in the church, am I right? <laughs> okay. Moving on, this is AIFS Stellenbosch in South Africa. This program is good for fermentation science and technology students, but it has coursework that fits for basically any CSU major. Students are able to take courses from the full curriculum at Stellenbosch University. The city has, has a Boulder, Boulder, Colorado, like five, 
It's a college town tucked into the mountains about one hour from Cape Town. Students get paired with a Mati buddy, which is a local student to help them navigate the transition. Um, and this program also includes an excursion to the garden route, one of the most beautiful parts of South Africa. Additionally, there are excursions to, Cape to, excursions to Cape Town, Robben Island, the Cape of Good Hope, Hope and the Cedarburg Mountains. Um, there are also volunteer opportunities available. Stellenbosch is a scenic university town located in the winelands of the Western Cape. It's at the base of the mountains, like I mentioned, and the town's oak-shaped streets are lined with cafes, boutiques, and art galleries. So you'll get to learn about this new culture, take courses, and get a unique experience that's once in a lifetime. Florence is one of the top destinations for CSU students. It's a classic Italian experience, truly a gem of a city. Students love Florence because it's a little smaller than Rome, so it's not as touristy. It's more manageable to get around, has the classic Italian cobblestone streets, gorgeous plazas. Uh, so it's no wonder that it's frequently named one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Though Florence is an ancient city, the focal point is its Renaissance art and architecture. It's considered the birthplace of the Renaissance. Its streets present a stunning reflection of the birth and development of modern society, with, which shifted importance towards the individual and creativity. This program is great for apparel and merchandising, family and consumer sciences, fermentation science and technology, hospitality management, HDFS, interior design and architecture students. Students take courses at Florence University of the Arts and um, the activities that the program includes um, include uh, bookmaking, soccer games, cooking classes, weekend excursions to Cinque Terre and Lake Como and day trips to nearby sites around Italy. So uh, students love their experience with SAI Florence. All right, so one of the big questions we get asked is how credits work. Um, and this depends on the type of program you're on, but we're here to help you work through the process. So CSU offers over 100 programs that give students CSU credits. So in these programs, students can easily see if the credits will work for their degrees. And I talked uh, about a couple programs, um, short-term programs, faculty-led programs that this works really well for in um, the short-term program session for this college. But the programs we looked at today require you to transfer credits back from the institution abroad. So for example, transferring credits back from Florence University of the Arts here to CSU. So for these programs at institutions abroad, we'll transfer those credits back to CSU. And for the transfer credits, there are two steps in ensuring credits will work for your degree. First, you'll have your coursework reviewed by the registrar's office. This will determine how many credits each course is worth and if it will be, um, if it will count for upper or lower division credits. Second, your academic department will determine how the coursework will fulfill your degree requirements. So you can do this before you even start an application for one of these programs. So you'll know with these approvals, um, exactly how your credit, the credits you are interested in taking abroad will transfer back to CSU. So they can keep you on track to graduate in a timely manner. And if this seems a little intense or overwhelming, not to worry, it's it will help you work through the step-by-step -step process. Um, and this will be, you'll work through the transfer credit form pictured here. So this is the form 
that you'll use to see how your the possible courses you want to take abroad will transfer back to CSU. So as you can see, there's seven steps which you'll need to follow. But basically, you'll get the course descriptions or syllabi from where you want to go abroad. You'll look at the classes, look at your graduation plan, kind of compare, make some um, educated guesses on which classes you want to take that could keep you on track for graduation, and then turn it into the registrar's office, um, which is step four, to see how the courses will transfer back to CSU. So even before you, you could do this even before you apply, if you get started early, even definitely before you go abroad, you'll know exactly how the courses you take abroad will come back to CSU. There are several professionals who will advise you as you prepare for your experience abroad. And we're all working together to make sure your questions and needs are addressed. So you'll work with your education abroad coordinator, your academic advisor, and your program advisor or program leader when you go abroad. So you'll have lots of support. So you wanna go abroad and you have a program in mind or you don't know which program you wanna do yet. Either way, let's talk. You can schedule an appointment to meet with one of our coordinators. Education abroad coordinators specialize in different regions of the world. So your assigned coordinator will be based on your program of choice. And I'll tell you in a little bit about how to make an appointment. So if you already know where you'd like to go, you can make an appointment with a specific coordinator. And if you don't know yet, you can make a general appointment. Along with the education abroad coordinators, there are also our peer advisors. And these are students who have been abroad before who work in our office. We have Brennan who studied engineering in Wales, Claudia, study psychology and study abroad in France, and Tia, who's an apparel production and design student who did a faculty-led program in Morocco with the Academic Advancement Center. This program is called Education and Culture in Morocco. So if you are, would like to talk to Tia about what it was like to study abroad as an apparel production and design student, um, please email educationabroad at colostate.edu to get a time to set up a time to talk. Financial aid and scholarships. Did you know that the majority of your scholarships, grants, um, financial aid loans can go abroad with you? So to learn more, please watch the financial aid and scholarship presentation that was live streamed to YouTube. There you can meet Cindy and Evelyn, who are pictured here. They work in the Office of Financial Aid and work with students on education abroad programs. The presentation will be focusing on financial aid and scholarships. First things first for scholarships is to know the deadlines. Please pay attention as deadlines are shifting slightly in 2022. So next steps. We've gone over the basics on getting started and here are some next steps. So you can see what, you can have your graduation plan, talk to your academic advisor about this to get a good sense of what courses you need to graduate. You can visit our Start Here page on the Education Abroad website. You can also take a look and peruse some programs online. If you wanna schedule an appointment, there are a couple ways to get there from our website. You'll schedule an appointment through a system called Navigate, which is a scheduling software system. If you go to our website, there are two places to find um, the information on appointments. So on our homepage, you can scroll down a little bit and click the green button, learn here, or learn, which is, you can click learn more about appointments button. Or if you're on a desktop, in that top menu bar, you can click about and then contact Education Abroad. Or if you're seeing it through a phone, you go to the hamburger bar up at the top 
and then expand the about options and click on contact education abroad. There you can see information about making an appointment with an education abroad coordinator, appointments with financial aid, appointments for a Peace Corps rep, and when the peer advisors have open advising. So in addition to this presentation, um, we encourage you to see other um, education abroad presentations. And I'll, I'll go back to our next steps so that you can um, are, are on this page a little bit more and you can also see a link to our website. Um, and then our YouTube channel, if you Google CSU International Programs or Colorado State University International Programs and click down to playlists, you can see um, the Virtual Fair 2021 YouTube playlist. So that's the end of the presentation. And if there are any questions, I'd be happy to address those. It doesn't look like we have any questions at this time. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for watching.